Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and I've built a PC for someone and it doesn't have Wi Fi. So, let's remedy that. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be going through uh, the options for Wi Fi in your desktop or possibly even a laptop PC or even a Mac for that matter. Wi-Fi is pretty much the standard in most places nowadays, and there's various options, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and various other options which are available. But the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz are the really the two main factors. So when you're thinking about adding a device, a Wi-Fi device to your PC, what do you have to take into consideration? What is the best option for you? And actually, what is the cheapest way of going about it? All those things answered, hopefully, in this video. Okay, so to start from the beginning, this is a PC that I've built for a uh, client, and after a quick discussion with them, assuming that they would be on a wired internet connection, it turns out there isn't a wire anywhere near where the PC is going to be situated. So I quickly had to do some quick research and see what was the cheapest way I could actually add decent Wi-Fi to the machine without costing both myself and the client an absolute fortune. So the options that came up were a PCI Express add-on card, such as this one from Newbit, which we did a video on previously, which uh, you can check out from the links up here. But Another option, which is actually seeming to be a much, much better solution, is this one from TP-Link. Now, this is an AC600 USB stick, so this supports both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz, and it's absolutely tiny. As you can see from the box there, this is one of those nano receivers. So literally, you can just plug it in and forget all about it. Now, that is one of the benefits of having a USB device of this type. With the PCI Express cards and some other USB sticks, you do find you have those external antennas, which do increase the coverage and in certain hotspots will make signal strength much, much better. But for most people, Wi-Fi in, at least for British homes anyway, we've got relatively small houses, so Wi-Fi signals shouldn't be an issue. Now, one thing, obviously, if you do use a USB device, if for some reason there is an issue with maybe because you've put it into the back of the machine, it's right up against a brick wall and the router is the other side of those brick walls, etc. You can, if you want to, use a USB extension cable. So that way you can plug this into your PC, plug the USB adapter into the end of the extension, and you can pretty much route it wherever you want to, or at least away from the back of the PC. So the, for me, the USB stick actually has a lot more flexibility than a PCI Express or a fixed type of Wi-Fi device will have. So that is one of my primary concerns, obviously trying to get a good signal and also placement as well. Another consideration is the fact that the PC is actually designed for someone who is uh, slightly younger, let's say, and you know what it's like when you're younger, you're a little bit more kind of uh, rough and tough with your equipment and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted something that didn't have an antenna sticking out the back because it's just basically another point of failure. It could get damaged, snapped off, broken, etc. which means another support call, which uh, yeah, we try to avoid wherever possible. So the USB stick being small, compact, is the way forward as far as I'm concerned. And also speed-wise, a lot of motherboards now do actually come with Wi-Fi built in, but they generally tend to be AC600. Sometimes you get AC1200 if you're lucky, but generally it tends to be the slower AC600. Now AC600 is still pretty fast. You're looking at 433 megabits per second on the five gigahertz and anywhere up to 200 megabits per second on the 2.4 gigahertz. So for most people, especially again, for us living in the UK where we have broadband speeds of anywhere really between 50 and 100 megabits per second as a standard package, unless you do spend the extra, this is gonna be absolutely fine. And we're gonna be doing some speed tests to see actually how it performs on our 100 megabit system. So let's get on with it. Now, obviously this is an unboxing channel, so we should do an unboxing, although this is extremely simple. There isn't a great deal. And as you can see from the box, this is from TP-Link, which actually I do trust as a provider and they do make some pretty decent stuff. In all honesty, there was a slightly cheaper alternative on this, which actually was a AC1200, but it was some kind of make which I'd never heard of before. And with those kind of things, you've always got to be a little bit cautious. Again, I'm going to be the one who's doing direct support for this particular PC, so I want something with a brand name and something that I trust. The TP-Link have been around a long time and they make some pretty decent stuff. Price-wise, this is actually really good at the moment. It is a Amazon number one bestseller. And we'll put some affiliated links in the video description, so if you want to pick one up for yourself, you can do. And we'll also link to the PCI Express version, should that be of interest to you. But this at the moment retails for like nine pounds, which is absolutely fantastic. So less than a tenner for adding five gigahertz Wi-Fi to your PC is absolutely awesome. Now, one of the downsides of this, actually, before we get into the unboxing, is this is only Wi-Fi. It isn't a combo car, so it doesn't have Bluetooth as well. So if you wanted Bluetooth as well, you would have to get an additional USB dongle. But I think for most people, when you're buying a combo card, which has Bluetooth as well as Wi-Fi, generally you're buying it for the Wi-Fi, 
the Bluetooth is kind of a secondary factor and actually in some cases can potentially be an additional point of failure. So anyway, let's get this thing unboxed. So as you can see, packaging wise, pretty nice looking and you actually get quite a lot of packaging considering what is inside there. The nano receiver is absolutely tiny, as we'll see. So that is the actual receiver itself. As you can see, lots and lots of packaging for a tiny, tiny little device. And actually it's almost exactly the same size as a receiver for the Logitech keyboard. So in the packaging, we get a installation guide for the wireless USB adapter. And this does work with pretty much most operating systems from Windows XP upwards. Also compatible with Mac as well. So if you want to go down the Mac route, obviously if you've got a damaged Wi-Fi antenna in your MacBook or whatever the case may be, you can add it to a Mac very, very easily. Also, there's a certificate of authenticity for the actual device itself, and we get a installation disk, which covers basically pretty much all of the TP-Link devices that they make on the market, and also there's some reference material in there as well, should you be interested, but I think most people are probably gonna plug it in and off you go, which is essentially how it works. So all we need to do is to peel back the plastic on there, take the device out. That is pretty much it, we're ready to rock and roll. So I'm gonna quickly fire up the PC, and we'll go through the installation process and do some speed tests. So we'll be back straight after this. Okay, so to start off with, we've got the PC set up and it's ready to go. We've got no internet connection at the moment. So what we do is plug in our little USB stick and I'm gonna plug it into the front just so you can see me plugging it in. And we should get a little icon at the bottom shortly. And there we go. So that's installed the drivers in the background. And also there is a very small LED on the top there, you can see, so there's an activity LED, so you can see if it's actually working or not. Obviously, if you've got it plugged into the back of the PC, that's going to be less useful, but certainly if you've got it in the front, you can see what is actually going on. So as we can see now, we've got our Wi-Fi networks which are available to us, which have popped up. So uh, we'll choose the main Churchill one, which is our faster network here, which is the 5 gigahertz one. The smart network we've got set up is on running on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, which we use for all of our, well, smart devices, which separates things and obviously gives you more bandwidth or higher, faster bandwidth for those kind of faster objects, whereas smart devices literally need a, a little blip every now and then just to communicate with the servers. Anyway, with that said, all we need to do is to put in our Wi-Fi key. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in now. And then all we do is click next. And this is a point where you can choose. So if you're putting this PC into an existing home network and you wanna share files, that kind of stuff, then at this point you can choose yes to allow it to be discoverable by other PCs on the network. If it's gonna be a standalone machine or it's in somewhere that's a little bit less secure, then definitely choose no, but obviously it is entirely down to you. I'm gonna choose yes because uh, at the moment it's here and I wanna share files across my NAS, etc., for setting up this PC, so it's absolutely fine. So I'm gonna click on yes, and basically that's it. We are connected and we are secured. So that's a really, really simple thing to do. So the first thing we can do now is to actually do some speed tests. So let's go into one of the Google Windows, or rather Edge window as it turns out to be, and we'll just type in speed test. And we'll try the internet speed test. So all we need to do, click on start. This is quite a rudimentary test, but it certainly gets the job done. And so we're getting pretty much what I would expect to get. Around right about the, uh, the upper 40s, lower 50s, upload wise, should be a little bit lower. We are experiencing some issues with uh, Virgin Media here at the moment. So it is extremely slow and it seems to burst between three and six megabits per second. So there we go, our final speed. So download speed is just a shade under 60 megabits per second and upload is 5.6. So pretty much exactly where we should be for our system. We have actually got a 100 megabit system, but very rarely do we actually get those full speeds. Actually, previous to this, I did actually do a test on my PC behind me, which is using both Wi-Fi, which is the, again, AC600 and the MSI B550 VDH Pro, and pretty much identical speeds. And if I plug in the LAN cable, again, very, very similar speeds, a little bit faster, about 10 megabits faster for a wired connection. So as far as I'm concerned, this is working really well and is getting me pretty much exactly the results I want to get. The ping is saying it's less than one millisecond, which uh, I don't believe for a second, but certainly seems to be okay. So there we go. That is pretty simple, pretty easy to do, and it just works. And if this is plugged into the back of the PC again, it's very easy to just forget it's there. You're not going to break it off accidentally. There's going to be no antennas or anything to snap off, that kind of stuff. 
Obviously, again, if you do have issues with connectivity because your PC is metal, which blocks most signals, and it's up against a wall, you can, of course, use a extension device. I would have liked to have seen some of that actually included in the packaging, just a small one, really, just to maybe raise it away or just to the side of the PC, that would have been good. But again, these things are pretty much pennies. So I'll put some links for those as well, actually, in the video description. So if you want to check those out as well, you can do. But overall, I think I'm, uh, I'm pretty, pretty pleased with this. The biggest takeaway of this is it is actually a dual band device. So you can get just normal USB 2 Wi-Fi adapters, which are just on the older N frequencies, so the 2.4 gigahertz, etc., for around about the same money. So you might as well spend pretty much the same and actually get both bands. Granted, it is an AC 1200 or higher, which would have been nice. There are options, so if you do want to get the TP-Link version of this, which has actually got the AC 1200 specs, so for a little bit faster internet, then that certainly is an option, but it does increase the price generally by about two to three times. So it is quite an expensive option, but for me, I think this works absolutely fine for streaming, for gaming, all that kind of stuff is gonna be absolutely brilliant. And you'd never notice the difference between this and the AC 1200 against the 600 anyway. The only time it would really come into some sort of notice, I think it would, if you're transferring big files across a network, maybe if you're using a NAS, that kind of thing, then certainly that would come into some sort of effect. But otherwise, I think it's gonna be absolutely fine. So anyway, I've waffled on for far too long. This has been how to add a USB Wi-Fi adapter to your PC and actually do it in a very cost-effective manner. Again, links in the video description below. If you've got any comments or questions regarding this, then please feel free to let me know in the comment section. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll see you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.